the triumphs and the frauds, the treasures and the fakes, the fact of life. We're going to die. Be of good heart. Cry the dead artists out of the living past. Our songs will all be silenced. But what of it? Go on singing. Maybe a man's name doesn't matter all that much. Oh, hey there. So, for whatever reason, there's this whole slew of shitty no budget African action movies that nobody ever really talks about. And that's kinda sad. On a budget of roughly half of Freddo, Ghana's Ninja Movie Productions, as well as many other studios, make what are essentially suffering on the lines of that crappy action skit you made in school. Despite it being your first film and generally being shit, there's a naive quality to it, and you remember it fondly as the thing that got you into filmmaking to begin with. While there are many films like it, some with fewer shots of your living room wall, thus ends a brief explanation of Vimeo. Hey bruh, check out my showreel. Check out my showreel, man. Check out the showreel. Dude, can you check my SoundCloud? No, I mean my showreel. The difference with Ninja is that they make these films professionally, having two hour runtimes, roughly enough to pay back the Freddo it took to make. They even split up into two or three parts in order to make the money back. Unlike who killed Captain Alex with Ramon Film Production! They've been documented by every major news outlet under the sun. We don't really know much else about Ninja other than... I don't know. They're a studio, they make films. Nope, nobody's researched them. Okay, let's see, uh, they've made six films. 48 ratings? Okay. The director's called Ninja. Yeah, th that's actually his name. We, we just know him as Ninja, there's nothing else. We'll specifically be looking at the sci-fi action flick <laughs> Thankfully, this one's in 720p, unlike many other films from the studio. So my it should look slightly less glaucoma. Also, the audio clips loads, so I'm just gonna warn you from the volume and stuff. There's a few keggles worth of similar films on the Adowa TV YouTube channel for free. I'd also recommend Swahiliwood. Latifa Bongo movie is a favourite. And just lube it up, and um, it's a long process, you know, to get your whole, get your whole arm up there. But uh, it's an intense feeling for the other person. I think for myself too. It's um, you go in places that, uh, even though it's physical with your hand, but for some reason it's it's also more emotional. Also, there are spelling mistakes and grammar errors in the subtitles themselves, so you just laugh at that as well. It just makes it better. <laughs> just do it with subtitles. It's incredible. Here's B14. Yeah. 
So you boot up the video, you totally didn't rip from YouTube and get a look at the company logo. Insert Vaporwave here. There's a pretty cool effect on the text for the opening credits, but there's only so much you can take before the aforementioned glaucoma sets in. The film begins in media res with some hostages in generic location number 47. Oh god, it really is a student film, isn't it? Get used to the royalty-free music and sound effects. Generally speaking, the auto-toing is actually pretty decent. Crossfades are nice, sound is mixed somewhat competently considering nobody there they are. Then there's the clipping. Half the time you feel like you're watching a Metal Gear Solid fan film, with all nonchalant action music and dialogue sequences that go on for way too long. The hostages plea for their lives, in the most hilarious way ever. While the guy who did the subtitles misses a space after a full stop. Apparently Lan D has seen some shit, and has superpowers or something. Black Agent Smith is called Scorpion, and he protects Lan D. <laughs> I love how his voice is pitched down to try and seem menacing. It's like beer snobs and Budweiser. They don't get along. Your toast buds are worse than card plow, says the snob, as he hipsterously sips a pale shit-coloured IPA you've never heard of. Oversized scarf accumulating dirt on the floor with beer foam is immaculately shaped face vagina. Wait, I've almost finished my beer, hang on. Let me just... There we, there we go, that's it's good. Mm. Instead of killing them, Scorpion brands the hostages, plantation style, with his laser powers. While well, they scream... Screaming and blood-curdling agony. <laughs> you can't make this up if you try. And they use free shots each of them screaming. Why can't you just use a B-cam? Oh wait, they don't have a B-cam. This still looks dumb. And I do the exact same thing for each of the three hostages. So, there are three shots of the hostages getting attacked three times. God stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of what he's created? Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Shut the, shut the, shut the, shut the fuck up, Donnie. There are so many ways you could edit this to make it look better, but nope, gotta use the spare take somehow. So now they have the all high mark, so now they know everything about the hostages, such as what they're thinking, what they've seen, all those whereabouts, etc. Pretty spooky. It's kind of like a school play of George Orwell's 1984, except with Hans Zimmer brass section bukake noises. <laughs> It then goes into the next scene, in which we discover that after Disney counseled Corey in the house, he wants him to become an African drug lord. He sends his buddy Johnny off on an errand, telling him not to get caught, as that might get in the way of his cocaine deal. We don't actually find out what the errand is until several scenes later, which makes the next 10 minutes or so overly confusing and scary. Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for you. I freaking love this kid, and I mean that in a totally not homosexual way. It's like he's trying to do his best Robert De Niro impression the whole time, but his stubby stature and was so worthy tuxedo simply don't cut it. It then cuts to a cliché training montage, up there with Turkish Star Wars and the collective runtime of the entire Rocky franchise. <laughs> Skipping is clearly the most badass of exercises. Then his mum shows up. Apparently he has a job tomorrow, so he needs to train and stuff. I mean all murderers have to work out at some point. Elliot Rogers used the bodybuilding forums. 
like the cock-a-doodle-doo on a serene country morning, Garnons wake to the sounds of dubstep and slow-motion running sequences. What I found from pretty much every single one of these films from Africa is that some shots come for way too long especially the slow motion bits. Like, okay, I get it, you want to look cool in slow motion and stuff, but it's only ever done unironically. That shot of the car I put in the intro of this video is one of the more egregious examples, and that shot wasn't even in slow-mo. Longer takes can be pretty cool. One of my favourite films, Stalker, by Andrei Tarkovsky, has the tunnel scene with fairly long takes that cohesively flow into each other like a flowy thing. And the length of the takes worked because there was a lot of movement in them. Characters go in and out of the shot being obscured by the tunnel walls. It's awesome. Yes, I just compared Tarkovsky to an amateur action film, but my point is that B-14 slow motion sequences are pretty gay and have nothing to do with Tarkovsky. Really, I just wanted to talk about Stalker. Go watch Stalker. Back to B-14. Okay, so get this. We then have a follow-up of the exact same shot from the other guy, except it plays at regular speed. You're cutting from the same shot to itself, only with a different character. So you're literally just watching shots of some dude running while the camera pans at the distance. This isn't an action scene, it's fucking TV sports coverage. Then two dudes just kinda Call of Duty stop and pop, long enough to get boring, and Loris Fishburne gets shot in the arm. Injured from the fight, he just runs away. Get your ass back here! Next scene. Scorpion and Landy teleport out of nowhere while some generic hip hop plays, and we get yet another cliche slow mo shot. I don't think Ninja realizes that you're supposed to put a boom when time slows down in the movie. Now that isn't funny enough already. To quote VJ Emmy in Who Killed Captain Alex? They walk slow. Cause they think slow. So this dude is happier, and apparently they have unfinished business. Landy wants the nondescript black box, while she reveals to us one of her quirky mannerisms. I don't even care that it's just lazy exposition. Landy's performance makes it glorious. I love how she just stands there looking pissed off while simultaneously pretending to chew gum. Landy doesn't feel like Appy is cooperating, so she gets Scorpion to do something about it after standing around looking all badass and stoic. There's that horn again. So there's a term in music called Les Motifs. It's probably French. It's repeated musical theme used to associate with a character. John Williams does this lot in Star Wars and such. Here are some examples. Darth Vader. Luke Skywalker. Jar Jar Binks. Scorpion. He asks for the black box. Scorpion, who you been you man? Am I mean you have you the house? <laughs> Take back what I said about the auditing, this is magical. Then a fight scene sort of happens. Scorpion gets his butt kicked. Landy isn't too happy about it. Then they leave with the badass music playing again. So now we're back with the hostages after the exact same bloody establishing shot from the beginning of the film. This establishes nothing other than the time of day. Apparently when she was gone, somebody took the cocaine, and we now have even more overacting. We can assume that Corey hired one of his dudes to steal the cocaine, I think? One of the hostages reckons the guy in the balaclava from earlier stole it from 12 minutes ago or so, so maybe we're starting to have some plot emerging finally. But Lan Di doesn't believe him, so Scorpion uses his mind powers to discover that he wasn't lying. I mean, I've had people like say, um, you know, why is this person love? massive tint so much, does this person have a limit or not? Well, I have no limits towards fictional art. And the pictures you're gonna see up here, I can go from like really huge tits to super over the top, like down the floor and all that stuff. I love ridiculous size like that because it's just, it's fun to actually fap to, it's fun to look at, to see how far breasts can really be drawn because that's just exciting. No! There's also this shot of a wallet on the floor, which really isn't explained, but it is apparently important later. Dan goes to visit Appir in the most unslapped Adidas ever to wait for a dude called Sammy. Appir is his dad. He asks if he's looking to become a footballer professionally, because pointless exposition. And then Sammy shows up. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up, Hey, Sam, what's 
chamou, 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 chamou. I have no idea why there's action music for this scene. They just kind of go off and play football. And Sammy mentions. I think no music written. Are they? Say, you don't commit fouls, baby, baby, no. Are they? We're now at football practice and the exact same music is still playing. This is some pretty hardcore football. The coach goes behind a tree to do some cocaine, but the team aren't too pleased about it. He takes it again on other occasions in the film, and each time he overacts more and more. It's probably my favourite thing about B14. I'll be honest, most of this film is actually pretty dull. Just overly drawn out dialogue scenes and even more bloody running. But there's always something stupid going on that edges you onwards. And this is only 20 minutes into the film, and we still have another 2 hours to go if you also count part 2. In the next scene, Bugsy Malone goes out of his hideout with his henchman friends, and asks for Johnny to retrieve the wallet. We still have no idea what's so significant about the wallet, but I guess you could assume it was being used to buy cocaine. I have no idea why else they need the wallet. This has not been explained. This is just a pointless MacGuffin. Maybe by taking the cocaine you become enlightened enough to understand the plot. This film is more confusing than your first watch of the end of Evangelion. It's a fucking deal. It's a fucking coming. A better theory would be that Corey ingested the cocaine, improving his acting abilities. His gang buddies go and get in the car, in which it takes 5 shots for a guy to go and open the gate, close the gate, and then get back in the car which takes about 30 seconds. I imagine if you took away the generic action music and replaced it with crickets, you'd have a fairly decent comedy. I'm sitting here driving. Doing all the driving, man. Whole fucking way from Brainerd, driving, just trying to chat, you know, keep our spirits up, fight the boredom of the road. You can't say one fucking thing just in the way of conversation. Oh, well, fuck it. I don't have to talk either, man. See how you like it. Just total fucking silence. Two could play at that game, smart guy. We'll just see how you like it. Total silence. It then takes another ridiculously long take for the car to move away. We finally get a glimpse of B14. Apparently it's the building where the wallet was. Corey's henchmen are going to steal it. Oh no! Scorpion was waiting for them the whole time. Looks like you're almost royally in for it now, Scoops. And now for the best bit in the entire film. Thief Guy shoots at Scorpion and he blocks the bullets with his hands. Thief Guy decides to go CQC with slightly more responsive combat than the new Yakuza game. Ah cool, now we're using swoosh sound effects for slow motion. Great job ninja, you're learning how to make movies. Then I shit you not, Scorpion grows a chain out of his hand, Mortal Kombat style. So that's why he's called Scorpion. They even pastiched that shot from the live action film in the 90s. This isn't something new to Ninja Productions, by the way. In fact, it's actually one of their more subtle homages. Keep the change, you filthy animal! The other guy finally shows up and shoots Scorpion in the neck, giving his fee friend enough time to run away. Scorpion teleports away to stop the car from escaping. They try to hit him with the car, but he teleports away again. He teleports back again behind the car and hooks it. The car is too strong, I guess, so they get away, and for whatever reason, Scorpion can't go after them. So he seems pretty intimidating, I don't know. It's also pretty stupid. Stick around for part two, I guess. Um, films are fun sometimes when they're not this one. 